The goal with evolutionary algorithms has always been about optimization. The very word optimal implies one optimum, one solution. When evolving virtual creatures, this is not an issue. In fact, that's often the goal. How can we evolve the best walker, the best swimmer, the best jumper, whatever it might be? However, artificial life should also strive to look at organisms together, in the context of each other. In fact, when is life ever isolated from other life? When is a single solution ever enough? GenePool was created to simulate an ecosystem of swimming organisms, swimbots, that have the capacity to evolve as they compete for food. Each swimbot is composed of articulated segments that move to push or turn the swimbot within a fluid physics engine. All aspects of these segments, including how they rotate or how many or how large they are, are all informed by the 158 genes, the swimbot DNA. Our simulation begins with a population of swimbots with randomized DNA. With fierce competition for little bits of food, natural selection begins to filter for those swimbots that are better at reaching food and mates. And so the starting population evolves. But as with any genetic optimization algorithm, the solution was always the optimum, the same. The laws of physics and the mechanisms of swimbot movement always favored a particular swimming style, an eel-like movement, so efficient that these swimbots always outcompeted the others. But there's so much coexisting biodiversity in the natural world. How does the natural world do it? What if we just tried to go from one optimal swimbot to two optimal swimbots? Maybe then we can find the key to biodiversity. So we began allowing swimbots to actually speciate. Previously, all swimbots could always interbreed, but the goal was to have multiple species, so we had to create some sort of gene barrier. So just like with natural evolution, once gene flow is reduced between populations, mutations will accumulate until the two populations are not able to reproduce, even if they do come back together. So we created a threshold in genetic dissimilarity such that swimbot populations could diverge into unique species over time. However, even as the swimbots diverged into new species, one of those species always managed to take over. There was still a missing ingredient. So what allows species to coexist? Well, ecologist Dr. Peter Chesson in 2000 wrote a synthesis about the factors that allow natural species to coexist. So we decided to try to apply some of those ecological principles in gene pool. Dr. Chesson explained that coexistence primarily happens due to two mechanisms. The equalizing mechanism suggests that the more similar two populations of organisms are in their competitive ability, the longer they can compete with each other before one population wins the fight. The stabilizing mechanism, however, suggests that two populations of organisms can coexist indefinitely when individuals in those populations compete more with themselves than with other species. In other words, each species has its own niche. So we implemented these mechanisms in gene pool. For example, stabilizing coexistence was added to our world by making two types of food instead of just one, along with adding genes that allow swimbots to evolve a preference and ability to eat those different types of food. And so, for the first time, swimbots were able to evolve from the primordial ocean into two successful and coexisting species. The start of biodiversity as we know it. Through these experiments, we found that principles of biodiversity can help us approach optimization from a more holistic perspective. Life is never on its own, and no virtual creature should necessarily evolve on its own either. In exchange, our virtual creatures might even help us understand biodiversity itself, maybe just a little bit better. So here are some clips from the two virtual creatures that we are submitting from the competition that co-evolved in a common environment. Thank you.